Hey, uh, more physics practice. Um, uh, an object is released from rest from a great height and reaches its terminal velocity. Which of the following statements is true of the object while it's falling with terminal velocity? Keep in mind, terminal velocity is a constant velocity. There's no longer a gravitational force on it. That's preposterous. There's no longer a drag air resistance force. Equally preposterous, uh, especially if you've ever jumped out of a plane. Um, its acceleration is upward. No, it has constant velocity. Magnitudes of the gravitational and drag forces on it are equal. Yes. Gravitational drag forces act in the same direction. No. That's D, right? Constant velocity. Forces are balanced. Uh, number two. <clears throat> a student with a mass of 50 kilograms is standing on a bathroom scale while riding the elevator. 50 kilograms would be a gravitational force of about 500 newtons. It's using 10. Um, and the reading on the scale that they're standing on is 400 newtons, so they, uh, they seem to weigh less. So that would mean that the normal force on them from the scale is less than the force of gravity. This is the 500 newtons, and this is the 400. Well, that means there's unbalanced force downward, right? That means they're accelerating downward. Now, there's two things that could be happening here. They could be going down and getting faster, moving downward with increasing speed, or they could be moving upward with decreasing speed. And the upward with decreasing speed isn't an option. So it's got to be D. Number three, it also it helps if you've ever ridden on an elevator before. That helps too. Uh, the system represented above consists of two objects. That's called an Atwoods machine. Um, M1 is greater than M2. Which of the following is true about the changes in gravitational potential energy, delta U, and kinetic energy of the system soon after the objects are released from rest? So the, um, the change in gravitational potential energy is less than zero, and the change in kinetic energy is great. Well, let's just think about what's going on here. When we release this, this is going to go down, and this is going to go up, right? So the change in gravitational potential energy here, it's going to lose some. It will be big M1 G times however far they go, and it's going to lose that much. And then here, we have M2 G H, and it's going to gain that much. So it's going to lose this and gain this. But this is more because the M1 is bigger. The H's, of course, are the same because they're attached by that string. So, uh, so it looks like this is true. The change in potential energy is negative because this one goes down the same amount as this one goes up, and this one's bigger. So that eliminates a bunch of these answers. All right. Um, the, and maybe, I mean, the change in kinetic energy, they're moving from rest. So this is going to have 1 half m1 v squared. It's going to go from 0 to something. So that's gonna, it's going to increase. And of course, the amount that this increases is precisely equal to the amount that this decreases. Right? A decrease in this leads to a gain in this, because uh, mechanical energy would be conserved here. There are no non-conservative forces, no friction there, nothing. So that's A. Ooh, this looks like fun. A tape attached to a moving object was pulled by the object through a marker puts dots on the tape at a rate of 10 dots per second. So the tape is getting pulled through at time zero. It's here, dot, 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 dot. So here, it's going very slowly here, right? These dots are all very close together. So it did not go very far. These dots are uh, a tenth of a second each. And then it looks like it starts to accelerate. The dots are getting further apart. And then they get closer together again. And then dot, 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 dot again at the end, right? So gives us an idea what's happening there. You'd have to pull it through very slow to get all those dots to be close together, right? If you pulled really fast, the faster you pull, the further apart the dots are. The average speed of the object for the total time, well, let's see, average speed, it goes from time zero. In 2.5 seconds, it goes uh, 17 and a half centimeters. So 17.5 centimeters divided by 2.5 seconds. And that goes in there seven times, so it's about seven. Uh, 
which of the following best represents the graph of the velocity of the object versus time? And we just talked about that, didn't we? So the velocity is it's kind of slowish, and then uh, it's accelerating, increasing, and then it decelerates, and then it's going slow-ish again, but not as slow as it was here. But that looks awfully promising, doesn't it? Um, this is close, but um, it has these two bits backwards. Uh, this would be accelerating, and the dots are evenly spaced, so it can't be accelerating in those bits. Uh, so same problem here, same problem here. So constant velocity, acceleration, acceleration, constant velocity. So A is correct. Number six, which of the following best represents the graph of the acceleration? Well, let's go back to this for a second. That's the slope of this. So acceleration is zero here, zero here, positive, negative. So I have step function is going to be zero, positive, negative, and then zero. Well, dang it, if that is an A again. Zero, positive, negative, zero. And none of the other ones do that. So A it is. Number seven and eight. Turntable with mass m, radius r, and rotational inertia mr squared over two, so it could be a uniform disk, initially rotates freely about an axis through its center at a constant angular speed with negligible friction. A piece of clay, also of mass m, falls vertically onto the turntable as shown above and sticks to it at point p, a distance r over two from the center. The rotational inertia of the clay turntable system after, well, I just have to add the mr squared for that. So I have um, mr squared over 2 plus a piece of clay also of mass m. So that has a m times its radius where it's at, which is r over 2 squared. So I have mr squared over 2 plus mr squared over 4. A half of mr squared plus a quarter of an mr squared is 3 quarters of an mr squared. Now, what happens to the rotational speed of the turntable and the angular momentum of the clay turntable about the axis as a result of the collision? So, what happens to the rotational speed? When you plunk this thing on there, it's the rotational speed is going to decrease. Right? The thing that's conserved in a collision is momentum, right? So in this momentum, the uh, in this momentum, in this collision, the angular momentum stays the same. And the rotational speed is going to decrease. Right? So the i omega before is going to equal to the i omega after. This went up. So this must go down. So the answer is D. Number nine. Which of the following must be true in order for a rotating platform to continue rotating with a constant angular velocity? Let's, let me read that again. Which of the following must be true in order uh, for a rotating platform to continue rotating with a constant angular velocity? Which of the following must be true? There are no forces exerted on it. Um, that does not need to be true, because there could be balanced torques that could include several forces. So there's no friction. No, you could have a force that overcomes friction, or a torque. Um, there is zero net force exerted on it. Um, that's not necessarily true either. We just need the net torque to be zero. Um, there are no torques. No, there could be balanced torques. So this, there is zero net torque. That's the key. Zero net torque. If there is net torque, that would cause angular acceleration. A newly discovered planet is found to have twice the radius and three times the mass of the Earth. If the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth is g, then the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the new planet is... Uh, so, remember the force of gravity, um, if we kind of connect the little mg and big mg, say, our g is equal to g m 
m over r squared, where r is just the radius of the Earth and m is the mass of the Earth. Right? So the r9.8 is a result of doing big G times the mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth squared. So here, this is a proportional reasoning problem. Um, the new planet is, has twice the radius, so doubling the radius is going to mean a 4 on the bottom. It's going to decrease by 4. And 3 times the mass, 3 times the mass. So 3 times the mass is going to increase by a factor of 3, but doubling the radius is going to decrease by a factor of 4. So 3 fourths of uh, our acceleration. Well, proportional reasoning there.